Bibles in the pew, the Bibles you brought with you, and the Bibles on a, on your electronic device. Let's turn to 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. And hear this, the word of the Lord. Of course, there is great grain, gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we, bought no, we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. This is the Word of God for the people of God. And we say together, Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy God, loving God, indeed, as we uh, come together, we come in the word and sacrament and song in connection to uh, be with you, spend time with you. And because we have, we're different, we're changed, we're better. We're more than we ever thought we could be. And so let this reality just uh, touch us and seep in us this day. In your name and for your sake we pray. Amen. The American dream, it is that which characterizes, has been used, that term has been used to describe the, the hopes and the desires and the dreams that most Americans uh, have. For most people, for a lot of people, the American dream uh, has to do with this subconscious desire for achieving success and uh, the acquisition of material possessions. Uh, a good paying job, a house that is livable, a car to get around, uh, and for some, that American dream includes a fishing boat. Uh, for others, it also includes a, a, a second home, a place to get away. It is the opportunity to pursue more than we have, to gain more than we have, and to meet success. We had oftentimes tend to measure success that we have in life by what we have, by our possessions. Often, this is what society tells us today, and our culture teaches us, declares to us. I mean, just look at ads. They're on TV and in print and on the internet. Most of them, many of them, are about giving or about getting and having. To get and to have, that is the mark of success. The love of money and the things money can buy is a primary or a secondary motive behind what many people do. The adage is true. Money cannot and will not buy happiness. But I do like the twist on uh, that adage that says money can't buy you happiness but it can buy ice cream and ice cream can make you happy. <laughs> we want we want to consume, to acquire, to buy our way. We want we want happiness. We want to get it. And if we got to pay for it, by golly, we'll pay for it. And we want it now. Not later, not in due time, now. I don't want it after this worship service. I want it. That's how we are. I'll make a confession to you. I won't embarrass anybody by asking how many people watch The Simpsons. I have watched The Simpsons off and on for years. Um, and uh, one of the characters that is on The Simpsons is a fellow by the name of Moe. 
and Mo owns a bar, and Mo decides he's going to move from owning a bar to having a restaurant. And Mo opens Mo's gourmet feed bag. And he makes a commercial for uh, the restaurant, and it says, You can get a five course meal deep fried and served to you in seven seconds. And Homer, the main character in the show, watches the commercial and he hears that line. You can get a deep fried, five course meal deep fried in seven, have it served in seven seconds. He goes, oh, but I want it now. <laughs> we talk about the desire for more, more than we need, more than we can afford, and it has fueled the financial quagmire that many of us find ourselves in. I said last Sunday, people way smarter than I'll ever be understand economics and how humanness that all of us have has affected the financial crisis that we live with and live in. Dr. William Black says that the average American is vulnerable to human nature and by borrowing way, way, way too much. Not close to, but enormously over the line. So he says we have to start reconsidering things. Going back, looking at old stuff, not new stuff. The stuff that we were taught in church. Dr. Stephen Pruitt says we just want it gratification but there is a saving grace perhaps faith can take us into ways that we can fight this part of inevitable human nature maybe we can live slightly different lives than we did in the past and so it is uh, together as we are in in, in worship and in other ways, we explore. We explore our faith to help us overcome our natures and live the life that God intends for us to live, calls us to live, the life that God plans for us. To hone in on the practical, the essential, and the spiritual. For many, the American dream has become a bit of an American nightmare. Uh, due to two distinct, due to two distinct related illnesses, one illness is affluenza. This is the constant need for more and bigger and better stuff. It's the desire to acquire. I gotta have more. And most of us have, at some point, maybe even now are infected. The average American home in 1973 was about 1,600 square feet. Now, in 2016, the last average was the average American home is 2,700 square feet. And that square footage comes with a price. Today, in the United States, there's an estimated to be 2.3 billion square feet of self-storage space. Wow. I mean, you know, storage space. You need a storage unit when all the stuff you've got in your house, you go, whoop, we got more stuff. So what do we do? We go, buy, we go get a storage unit. We put all that stuff in it. I knew somebody one time that said, well, I, I got a storage unit. Uh, and then I had to go get a storage shed for the stuff that wouldn't fit in my storage unit. <laughs> now, before you think I'm picking on people, you know, you're sitting there and you're getting ready to cross your arms and going, well, I'll go to storage unit. I don't know what to before you start, Before you start getting ready to think I'm picking on people, Timmy and I, when we moved here, we said we're going to get a storage unit to help with the transition. We're going to have it six months. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have six months in order to help with the transition of moving from, from Tennessee here to Marion, Virginia. And that, that six-month venture turned into three and a half years. 
And just, just this May, we finally did stuff with our stuff and got rid of the storage unit. The second illness that most of us get infected by or have struggles with is uh, credititis. Credititis is an illness that is brought on by the opportunity to buy now and to pay later. It feeds on that distinct desire that most of us have for instant gratification. Our economy is built on the concept of credititis. Credititis exploits uh, the lack of self-discipline, it allows us to feed affluenza. The average credit card debt in America in 1990 was $3,000. Today, it is $17,000. That's average. You know, and the average is always there's some lower or some higher, but that's just the average. The average sale with a credit card is 125% higher if we use a credit card than cash because, I relate to this, it doesn't really feel real when you put down the card versus cash. Credititis is not limited to purchases that we make with credit cards. It, it extends to cars and mortgages and other loans. The life of a car loan and home mortgage, those continue to increase while the average rate of savings continues to decline. And so, when we look at this, and we start to examine it in earnest, uh, we understand that there's a spiritual issue beneath these two illnesses. And the reality is, the truth is, it's always been a spiritual issue. Our souls were created in the image of God. Each one of us was created with that image implanted in us, on us, and that image has become distorted. We were meant to desire God, but sometimes we have turned that desire to God, we have turned it into the desire for possession. We were meant to find our security in God, but we find it in accumulating wealth. We were meant to love people, but we have at times decided to be to compete rather than love. We were meant to enjoy the simple pleasures of life, but we have busied ourselves with pursuing money and things. We were meant to be generous, to share with those in need. But there is this hoarding of resources that takes place. There is this sin nature within all of us. Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come, Jesus says, I have come that they, meaning us, might have life full and abundant. You know, the devil doesn't need to tempt us to do drugs or to steal or to have an extramarital affair in order to destroy us. All the devil needs to do is to convince us that it's more important keeping up with what culture says is important, borrow against futures, enjoy more than we can afford, and just indulge ourselves. And the devil's work can be accomplished. The writer of Timothy, the Apostle Paul, writes to Timothy and he gives him advice on leading the church in Ephesus. And within these verses, our scripture texts are the nitty-gritty spiritual wisdom that helps us, that guides us. Paul says, in part of his advice to Timothy, he says, Trust God and not money. It is to be interested in good deeds and actions, not actions that don't make a difference. 
when we come into a relationship with Jesus, when we have that connection with Jesus, the heart is changed. And each morning, we should get down on our knees and say, Lord, help me be the person you want me to be today. Take away desires that shouldn't be there. Help me be single-minded and focused on you and your ways. And as we do this, as we open ourselves up to this, as we pray that type of prayer, God's Spirit comes and cleanses us from the inside out. Bringing a purity of heart. We allow Jesus to work in us as we seek His kingdom and doing His will. As this happens, there's this greater sense of higher calling that comes because we have experienced this deeper connection with God. It's in our stewardship emphasis on the enough thing that we're trying to, to have and, and, and gain an understanding of generosity. Life is a gift and everything, everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. We are the managers, the caretakers of what God has given us. And within our nature, we have this need to be generous. We have a spiritual need to give. In our following of Jesus, there is a calling on us to live into such an understanding of faithfulness and generosity. We begin to look at ways that we can make a difference with our time and our talents and our resources. And it's in the, it's in the pursuit of good financial practices that we free ourselves up from this specter of debt and we're able to be engaged in mission in the world by prioritizing serving we're in time, serving and, and giving time to ministry we make a difference in the lives of others and the difference is consequently made in our life our life individually and as a church with God's help we can Simplify our lives and silence those voices that constantly say, More now, more now. We live counterculturally, we live below our means, not above. Build into our calendars. Allotting of our time, time to study, to pray, to worship. Tell some other things, no, and be involved in church and the things of God. Because prayer and study and worship, those things are central. Build into our budgets. Resources, the money we have that is a gift, that is a thank you. God, use this, take this. Appropriately so. So that we live generously and faithfully. You know, last, last Sunday I talked about our, our pumpkin. This pumpkin is to be cleaned out. And consequently, as pumpkins are, especially this time of year, they're, they're ready to be filled up. But you know, it's not just in the cleaning out of the pumpkin, you know, cutting the top, digging all the gook out. It, it's, it's being cleaned up in other ways. And in the process of cleaning up and in the preparing of this pumpkin, Transformation is taking place. It's being washed. 
prepared, top cut, cleaned out, design hand, carved. It's becoming not just a pumpkin in the field, but it's becoming a jackal. You'll have a light finish. It shines real bright. As transformation is taking place, this pumpkin is becoming. And what's happening with this pumpkin is what is happening with us. We are being transformed. We are becoming. As we seek to live a more simple life and have this understanding of generosity, to know that we are being transformed, that we are becoming. Oh, may God give us the, give us all the courage and the wisdom and the strength to always hold the kingdom of God. To hold the kingdom of God, the ways of Jesus. As the priority of all our lives. Wonderful and merciful God, how great you are, how loving you are. Oh, how you've given us so much. And so it is in our life. In all that you've given us, we respond to you. And so now we do so in word and song, in gift and time. giving you the best of all our hearts. Amen. Friends and neighbors, online and in person, as we depart this place, let us go in this truth. God loves us. God calls us to live a life that is centered and focused on God and God alone, and that all that we have and all that we are be unto Him and for Him, for His kingdom's sake. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.